hi welcome to another drive with care in this video we're going to do Folkestone test route 2 which if I show you on the map here we leave the test center we drive up Dover Hill into Capel Laferne we're going to do a turning the vehicle around in one of the roads then out of Capel drop down onto the dual carriageway the A20 take the second exit back into Folkestone a little drive around Cheriton and then winding up back here at the test center so let's see let's get cracking see if we can do this so leaving the test center no vehicles all good my voiceover will direct me which is all very good i know the route but um it's good to obey the signals isn't it of the voiceover at the junction turn right some nice comments on my other test route video and obviously there are people out there that may find this interesting so if you're taking a test then best of luck at the junction turn left I will shout out any hazards I see, otherwise I'm just going to be driving it and you can follow the, um, the route with me. At the junction, turn left. Man getting in and out of van. Give him some room. At the roundabout, take the second exit. So at the second roundabout, at the second exit, I don't need to indicate onto the roundabout, but I do need to indicate off. Car to my right, so I'll give way to him. He's going all the way round. And he's indicating off, it's all very good news. So unless the voiceover tells me what to do, when I approach a junction or as I'm approaching Middleburg Square, with no instructions, I'm just going straight on. It's a one-way system, so I have to go left anyway, but I'm going to go straight across. Lovely day for a drive. Take the next left. Okay, so I can't go left here because it's a uh, no entry. So it must be the one afterwards. This car didn't even look. That infuriates me. At the roundabout, take the first exit. My indicators on. Got a few pedestrians. Quite a bit of built-up traffic. Keep my distance from the truck. Truck. So I want the right-hand lane when I go off the roundabout onto Grace Hill, which is a one-way system. I will let the taxi know what I'm doing. A bit of indicator. Didn't wait for me at give way. But then he's a cab driver, right? Take the left-hand lane. So I want the left-hand lane. And the road swings round to the left. I will indicate just in case pedestrians suddenly decide they need to know where I'm going. It's a strange, it's one-way system up here, but we've got a weird junction, which is a give way. And there is a car coming, so I will give way. I don't need to indicate onto it though because of the one way. The car's turning off.
Take the left hand lane. Take the left hand lane, okay. Still all one way. Now it's two way traffic. We saw the sign. So we're back onto a normal two way traffic road. At the roundabout, take the first exit. First exit off. So we're going under the bridge then. Have to indicate because we need people to know what we're doing, right? No one at the zebra crossing. Cars parked on my side of the road, but plenty of room to get through. there's some obstruction in the road. Another zebra crossing, no pedestrians there. At the roundabout, take the fourth exit. Fourth exit, are you going to count them with me? <laughs> Put the indicators on, get into the right hand lane. to my right, so there's one, there's two, there's three, so we want the next one, here we go, up Dover Hill, 40 mile an hour zone, let's crank it up, anticipate being overtaken in a moment by this beamer who's been up my tail all the while I left. Middleburg Square. Drifting into the lane without indicating. Don't ever do that on your test. <laughs> Just because you're coming back over, you still need to indicate. So this is taking us up into Capel, and on this route there is one manoeuvre which is to turn the vehicle around. Now I used to call it a three-point turn, and it was a three-point turn when I was learning to drive. But I spoke to my son, who's a driving instructor, he said, no dad, it's just turn, turn the vehicle around, you know, if you have to do it in three moves or four moves or five moves. which to me in my modern th way of thinking makes sense because I might, as a driver, need to take multiple, you know, turns to get the vehicle turned in the road. Take the next right. Take the next right, okay. Old Dover Road we're going down. Now I need to get into this lane completely. I don't want my tail end hanging out. So completely in. Wait for the car. Now watch the speed zone here. It's a 20 mile an hour zone. And you mustn't go over the speed limit when you're doing your test. Or any other time, to be quite honest. There's dog walkers in the road. Take the second left. There's pedestrians approaching me, but they're giving me room, so they're not in the road. So that's good. Take the next right. out onto this side of the road to get into Albany Road because of the cars that are parked. OK. 
making sure I come in on my side of the road, but I have to immediately go round because of the cars parked there. Take the next left. And this, I'm guessing, is where you turn the vehicle around. What a narrow road. I can see why you wouldn't do it in a three-point turn. I'm going to do it here. I might be wrong, but I was looking at the test route and it's up here, then back down that way. So we're going to do it. We're going to turn the car around, however many turns it takes. <laughs> and I'm skilled. I can do this. I've been driving many a year. I just mustn't let the car hit the curb. <laughs> I must. My son's going to tell me off. He's going to be like, Dad, you shouldn't have taken them up there. That's not where it goes. I've not hit the curb yet, so it's all very good. I'm intentionally not doing it to hit the curb. What was that, about five turns? But we did it. At the junction, <laughs> turn left. Speak if you t if you're watching this because you're doing a test, then speak to your driving instructor. I don't want to be the one that tells you this was the road that turns the vehicle. Nonetheless, that's why I'm, I'm following the route that I've had on the DVSA. I would have thought this was the road to turn in. It's a lot wider. At the junction, turn right. So I've got to turn right and there's someone parked right on the junction there. So inconvenient. But I will slide into my section of the road so that I can avoid any vehicles turning in. At the junction, turn left. going left again. Look at that coast today. It's very sunny. So we're coming back out onto the 20 road. So there are no signs, only one in the road. So keep, keep that in mind. Take the second left. On the second left then. So there's one. At the junction, turn right. So turn right at the T-junction. Can you see what I can see? A stop sign. We mustn't just give way and pull out. We must stop. Motorhome is going for it. And a full stop. Nothing to my left, nothing to my right. Here we go. So the route now takes us down towards Dover, but we jump on the dual carriageway in a short distance at the roundabout. So this is a 40 zone that I've entered, probably saw the sign back there. But now we're going into national speed limit. So I can do 60 here. Not that I will be able to do 60. When we get on the dual carriageway, I can do 70 and I will take advantage of the dual lane and overtake where I need to. I'm definitely going to push the vehicle to 70 miles an hour because I feel like Ed Zena or Michael Schumacher. I wonder where the motorhome is going, whether it's going to Dover to jump on a ferry and go on holiday. At the roundabout, take the first exit. Yep, 
I was right at the roundabout, take the first exit. I've got a truck behind me, he's turning off. Get my indicator on into the left lane. Well, it's not marked, but you know, I can see that it's split. Take the first left. No stopping at any time signs. So I'm getting my speed up. I must be driving at least, well, I say at least 50. It's not a motorway, is it? So you don't have to be doing 40. Is there a minimum speed on the dual carriageway? There isn't. Just your, your normal. There's motorways that you can't drive less than 50. Clear to slide on. So let's get up to 70. Take the second exit. Okay, it wants me to take the second exit. I know the first one goes to Olcombe Valley, so the second one is Folkestone. Currently doing 68, something like that. But I've got a good speed on, and the car in front is not slowing me down, so I don't need to push to try like this little Vauxhall that's gone by, clearly doing 80, 90. But you don't need to. Unless you're in a mad rush to get somewhere, in which case you're gonna break the law. Mm. Right, indicate to turn, turn into the lane. Checked my mirrors and blind spots. I do want to pass the Honda, so I'm staying in the lane. No, I'm not. I'm going back in. I thought I was catching up with him, but he's clearly doing 70 anyway, as it is. Didn't really want to hog the lane, but now he's slowing down again, so I shall go back out. This gives you a little bit of overtaking experience. <laughs> Indicate back into my lane. Good stuff. So I can see the exit markers, the three, two, one. So this is the first exit but we're not coming off at this one, we're taking the second exit. So going through the tunnels. Which requires you to have your dipped headlights on. So if the car you're driving doesn't actually have automatic lights that come on, then make sure you turn your headlights on. Because you have to in a tunnel. Right, there's a slip road coming off. Always be aware for any cars coming on but there's none. Round hill tunnels. I'm not going to attempt to overtake the car. It seemed to be slowing down and then going fast again. But because I need the next junction, I could put myself in a precarious position by trying to overtake and then squeezing it. So I'm going to get my indicator on, check the van behind me, just to let them know I'm sliding off the A20. At the roundabout, take the second exit. We can see on the sign that the second exit leads to Folkestone A20 and Cheriton, so we're taking that second exit. Quite an exhilarating part of the drive, that, if you're learning to drive. Now we don't indicate on, but we will indicate off. Will these two cars indicate off? The Audi didn't, but the Honda did. It's all good news. At the traffic lights, turn right. So because we want to go right at the lights, 
we will slide into our lane. The car behind me has been riding on the chevrons. I would say clown, but I might say balloon, because <laughs> I've been watching police traffic cops, and there's one particular policeman there, and he's like, they're balloons. <laughs> I'll put the indicator on just as a matter of course. So it looks like we're doing a little bit of Cheriton suburbia here. And we're in a 30 zone. Take the next left. has pulled in. Is he going to try and continue to manoeuvre? We've got the concrete. Oh, he's coming out. It's all very chaotic. Car gave away for me. Give him a bit of a wave. At the junction, turn left. The sign tells me there are humps in both directions. I could anticipate some speed restrictions. Clear to my right and clear to my left. <laughs> Bumpity bump. Cars parked on both sides. Pedestrian in the road. At the junction, turn left. Right, I can get over to my side of the road. It always feels strange driving in the middle. The Honda's coming for it because he feels he can squeeze through. But that must be an age thing, because he looked like at least 75. Clear to my right. Cue for the garage. Have to squeeze out onto the road. Cheriton High Street. Car double parked. Will the Mercedes come out? At the traffic lights, turn right. So at the lights I want to go right. So I will slide into my lane. I'll indicate that I want to go into that lane. There's nothing behind me. Lights are changing, which is very convenient. We'll still have to wait, I'm sure. It may well be that the lights will change, so I'm not going to drive forward onto the pedestrian bit just in case the lights do change I can get through so now I'm committed if the lights do change then this stream of three vehicles will continue their little journey Just what they've done No need to indicate, just follow the road round. Take the sixth right. So it looks like we're going back into the town, uh, the test centre. So I'll nearly finished this route. 
I suppose if you're taking lessons and you're doing routes on with your driving school, whether they take you on the routes or not, if you have the um, ability to do t driving with a family member, then you could go out and do the routes as well, could Junction. Are you counting? Did you hear the instruction? I want to make sure I get the right one. almost non-existent but you can see them I went for that but that's because I'm a seasoned driver and there was plenty of room you might have to wait if you're doing it test. there's no harm in waiting you just take your time take the second left so there's one it's all clear Take the next left. Yes, we're back here. A bit of deja vu, don't you think? Less obstructions than the last time I did this one. Take the next left. Now again, I'm pulling out onto the right because it's difficult to see because of the car that was parked there. somewhere convenient to park. I think I'll stop in the same place when I left. I think if you had taken your test, they would take you to the park centre. Don't know if you have to reverse in or not. There you go. Folkestone test route number two. Hope you found that useful. Give the video a, a thumbs up. Perhaps subscribe. And I'll see you in another video. Bye for now. Drive with care.